the most terrifying bite in prehistory. Imagine facing a giant cat with teeth like huge knives. Would you call it the king of prehistoric predators? What animal could have had the most terrifying bite ever? In fact, the title might belong to an Ice Age feline. Meet Smilodon, the saber-toothed cat. Its name alone sounds scary, and its teeth were legendary. Some grew nearly a foot long, 30 centimeters. But was Smilodon's bite really the fiercest? Did it crush bone like a bear? Or was it more like a surgeon's scalpel? Stick around, we'll unravel Smilodon's secrets and see how it stacks up against today's big cats. You might be surprised whether its bite truly ruled or if this saber tooth relied on something else to make it truly terrifying. Meet Smilodon, the Ice Age saber tooth cat. You see why it's famous. That short, broad face and the two long, downward pointing fangs. Smilodon wasn't just any cat. It was built like a tank. Its body was stocky and muscular, with short legs, a short tail, and huge shoulders. There were actually three main species of Smilodon. S. gracilis, the smallest, about 121 to 220 pounds, 55 to 100 kilograms, roughly a big dog, kind of the saber cat cub. S. fatalis, the mid-sized one, weighing around 350 to 617 pounds, 160 to 280 kilograms, is about the size of a lion. Found in the La Brea Tar Pits, it had a powerful build but was shorter and stockier than a modern lion. And S. Populator, the giant from South America, the heaviest saber tooth of all. Adults could weigh 485 to 881 pounds, 220 to 400 plus kilograms, and stood nearly 47 inches, 120 centimeters tall at the shoulder. That's bigger than a Bengal tiger. Each had the same killer feature massive canine teeth. In the largest S. populator, those fangs reached about 11 inches, 28 centimeters long, almost the length of a ruler. You can't miss them on the skull. These teeth were slender and sharp, with fine serrations on the edges, like razor blades. But despite their size, the skull of Smilodon was actually short and stout compared to, say, a tiger's. The big cheekbones and high crests gave it strong jaw muscles, but some scientists note that its bite was surprisingly weak for its sizes. In other words, Smilodon had huge fangs, but not a big crushing power. More on that later. First, let's talk about those teeth and jaws. Killer weapons, enormous fangs and wide gape. Smilodon's prime weapons were its fangs. These canines were long, curved, and blade-like. Imagine two sabers hanging down from its mouth. In fact, they're longer than the canines of any living big cat. For comparison, a lion or tiger's canine might be only 3 to 4 inches, 7 to 10 centimeters. Smilodons were almost three times as long. And they weren't just long, they were incredibly sharp-edged. Think steak knives, not cleavers. Scientists believe these teeth were strong relative to the forces they experienced, meaning they could puncture flesh and even bone without breaking easily. Another special feature was Smilodon's jaw gape. Unlike a lion, which typically opens its mouth about 65 degrees, Smilodon could swing its jaw way open, over 110 degrees. That's like the difference between yawning lightly and dropping your jaw all the way to the floor. This huge gate meant Smilodon could fit those long teeth around big prey. It could, for instance, grab a horse's neck deep in its mouth with ease, something a modern cat with shorter teeth could never do. How Smilodon Killed, Pounds Pin and Slash since those fangs couldn't handle a bone-smashing bite, Smilodon did things differently. Imagine a powerful cat leaping out of cover onto a big animal. With that stocky build and strong forelimbs, Smilodon was likely an ambush predator. It hunted in wooded areas, not open plains. Scientists believe it would hide in brush, waiting for unsuspecting prey, like ancient deer or tapirs, then spring the attack. Its short legs and tail tell us it wasn't made for long chases. It was all about the surprise. Once close, Smilodon used its huge forearms and claws to grab on. Its shoulder and arm bones were thick and muscle-packed, much more than a modern lion's. In fact, analysis of Smilodon's arm bones show they had up to 15% thicker cortical bone than expected for a cat that size. This means it could handle immense stress without breaking, perfect for grappling with struggling prey. Think of a knight hugging a raging bull, those giant claws and arms held the victim down. With its prey pinned, usually on the ground, Smilodon had a window to strike. It would open wide and drive its canines into the throat or belly. One popular idea is the canine shear bite. The cat would flex its neck downward so the long fangs sliced into flesh, aiming to sever major arteries or the wind. This is much quicker than the slow suffocating throat clamp a lion uses, 
In fact, lab simulations show Smilodon's bite was optimized for that one killing bite when prey was immobilized. Prey evidence backs this up. Fossil finds include a juvenile glyptodont skull with an oval puncture through the top, exactly a gap the Smilodon's fang would make. That suggests Smilodon once bit clean through a heavily armored head. Also, isotope studies of Smilodon bones from places like the La Brea Tar Pits indicate its favorite meals were forest-dwelling herbivores, deer, tapirs, bison, creatures it could ambush in cover. So in action, Smilodon leaps, claws, grab, then fangs slash. No bone-crunching crunch, but a swift fatal cut. As one researcher put it, Smilodon's attack was more like an assassin's dagger than a bruiser's club. The prey is already down, then one quick stab ends the fight. In seconds, the big animal's carotid artery or windpipe might be cut, and life bleeds out much faster than any lion suffocation. This explains how Smilodon could take down beasts much larger than itself by playing lifeguard, not by a wrestling match. Bite Force, reality behind the ferocity. You might wonder, with all that muscle, how strong was Smilodon's actual bite? Surprisingly, scientists have discovered it was much weaker than you'd expect for such a massive cat. While the modern lion can clamp down with an incredible 4,000 to 5,000 newtons of force strong enough to crush thick bones, Smilodon's jaws delivered only about 1,000 newtons on their own. Even when you add the extra power from its neck muscles driving those saber teeth downward, the bite rose to roughly 2,000 newtons, still only about half of a lion's. For comparison, the jaguar, smaller than both lion and Smilodon, actually holds the record for the most powerful bite of any living cat. Jaguars can slam their jaws shut with a staggering 4,000 to 7,000 newtons, strong enough to pierce turtle shells and even skulls. In contrast, even the largest Smilodon, the South American giant S. populator, may have reached a slightly higher bite than its cousin S. fatalis, but still nowhere near the bone-crushing power of a jaguar or the raw force of a Tyrannosaurus rex, which could exceed 35,000 newtons. So in the end, Smilodon wasn't terrifying because of raw bite strength, it was terrifying because of how it used those enormous sabers. The bottom line, it didn't rely on raw jaw power. Instead, it had precision. As the Smithsonian reported, Smilodon's bite was only one third as strong as a lion's, meaning those sabers were meant for a single kill stroke, not repeated crunching. This is why Smilodon's front end, body and arms were built so heavy duty. All that strength was for takedown, not biting strength. In fact, because its bite was weak, Smilodon likely avoided scenarios that could hurt it. Researchers note it probably wouldn't risk biting a struggling prey on the run or slashing at a moving flank. Too much force in the wrong angle might snap a fang or stress the skull. Instead, once the prey was down, it went for the head, neck area, the one place the long sabers could penetrate deeply. When the kill was made, seconds mattered, and Smilodon's design killed fast. Unlike a lion's 10-minute suffocation bite, Smilodon's work was done in seconds. It stood apart. Its bite force was weaker than any of the big lion tiger, but its long fangs and power gave it a unique edge. The closest analog today might be the jaguar, which also uses stealth and bone-crushing bites. But Smilodon went straight for the jugular, literally. Also, Smilodon's arms were freakishly strong compared to modern cats, more like a bear's build. Think of a tiger hybridized with a grizzly bear on steroids. No modern cat has teeth remotely as long or a jaw gape so wide. Even the fangs of a lion, on display from a wild male, are dwarfed by Smilodon's sabers. And though lions are fearsome, you can read about them. Smilodon's entire hunting style is like something out of legend. For kids, imagine a hunter cat that doesn't suffocate, but door slams its fangs into you as soon as you wobble. Definitely terrifying. Why Smilodon's Bite Stands Out So, was Smilodon's Bite the most terrifying in prehistory? It depends on what you mean by terrifying. If you judge by sheer raw bite pressure, many prehistoric animals beat it. T-Rex Bite Force, 35,000 newtons, or even the short-faced bear with 5,000 newtons. But if you judge by the look and effect, Smilodon is up there. A saber tooth looks scary, those gigantic fangs are iconic. To an Ice Age herbivore, waking up to one of those leaping out of the brush would be a nightmare, even before it bit down. What's truly terrifying is how effective its attack was. Smilodon packed all its killing power into one maneuver, Scientific simulations say that once its sabers met prey's throat, seconds determined the animal's fate. 
Modern big cats can deal with tails, kicks, even charge from a run, but Smilodon's blow was sudden and precise. Not even a huge horse or young sloth had time to struggle much. It also faced competition. The Ice Age had other giants, dire wolves, short-faced bears, American lions. So Smilodon had to strike fast before others intervened. In that sense, its bite combined with all the wrestling was part of a brutal world where only the most surprising kills counted. In everyday terms, Smilodon's bite strategy was like an assassin's final kill. It wasn't about brute breaking bones, it was about hitting the right target at the right moment. That makes it terrifying in a different way. The animal got killed so quickly and efficiently that it almost seems inhuman. So did Smilodon truly have the most terrifying bite? For millions of years, any Pleistocene herbivore might have thought so. It certainly gave a new meaning to bite your head off. And for us today, we can marvel at how a cat that big could take prey much larger, not by brute force, but by becoming nature's ultimate ambush predator. It's a reminder that in evolution, being scary isn't just about power. It's about the right weapon and know-how. Smilodon's bite was as lethal as nature needed, even if it wasn't the strongest. With those huge sabers and bear-like arms, it delivered an instant killer blow. For those Ice Age animals, that was nothing short of terrifying. 